What's up guys, it's Parole and today we have a very special video. I had the opportunity a little while back to interview Vince Carreza, who played Carlos Oliveira in the original Resident Evil 3 back in 1999. So here we go guys, this is the interview, we talk through all things Resident Evil, his other projects and we go off on plenty of tangents as well, so enjoy and don't forget if you like what you see, like and subscribe. No, the brakes are out. Let me give you a heads up. A lot of my answers might be kind of boring. <laughs> oh no, I'm sure they won't. I'm sure they won't. I always feel bad with the fans at conventions and stuff because I don't play video games at all. It's not my thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, half of the half of the stuff I've worked on, I have no like. People ask me questions about story plot lines and plot plot points and stuff, and I go, I don't know. I have no. I have no. <laughs> you know. I, I recorded the voice. It was fun while I was doing it. Yeah. Had a class, you know, but I mean, when questions about like, remember when this happened? I go, nope, I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> there might be some of that in here if I remember rightly. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> oh, dear. As much as possible. Okay. So RE3 recently turned 23 years old. Um, and according to IMDB, was one of your first voice roles. How did you come about getting the role of Carlos? And what was the audition process like? Uh, a pretty straightforward, pretty standard kind of thing. Uh, my agents, uh, you know, they got a bunch of roles sent to them, as all did, did all the agents in Toronto. And um, they thought I'd be perfect for the role of Carlos. So I went into the agency, laid down an audition and I guess they liked it. So <laughs> they called me up. I think, I feel like it, it is a long time. It's like God, 23 years ago or long, well longer than that. Cause we made the game before it came, was released. So, mm -hmm. so I, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the, the game making process was about a year, maybe even a longer before it was actually released. Oh, wow. Um, cause they had to finish it and, and, you know, create all the, everything. And so, so it's probably about 24 years ago that we worked on it. I feel like but that seems about right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I, I think I had to go in to the recording studio, uh, and sort of do callbacks and like, you know what I mean? For them to sort of hear me and give me some direction to see, you know, if, if they, if it was, if it worked and. Um, and I'm not sure. I remember recording with, um, oh gosh, I can't remember her name. The girl who played Jill. Oh, um, Catherine Disher. Catherine, Catherine, of course. Because I was going to say Elizabeth. I was like, no, that's <laughs> Catherine. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember if I if we actually recorded to audit for the audition for the callback to see if they liked the combination of voices. Mm -hmm. but I remember we we her and I often recorded together. Okay. And, which was really rare. A lot of times that a lot of the voiceover actors and back in those days too, most animation and most video games, you did it by yourself. You did mm -hmm. it solo. Um, but for some reason, I think just because we had a lot of interaction together in that yeah. game, we had a lot of back and forth and there, and so there, they wanted that chemistry and the relationship and stuff. I, I ended up also doing a lot of solo recording as well. When we got to some of the like fight stuff, like where you're doing damage stuff or you're, you know yeah. what I mean? Like you're, you know, you're in the middle of battle. So a lot of that stuff is just, it's very, when you, when you're recording that it's incredibly repetitive and it's incredibly boring. <laughs> uh, and, um, so that stuff you always do on your own just right. because it's, because they just want to focus on one voice, you know, give us a, give us a punch in the gut, short, medium, and long, you know what I mean? Give us like, you know, and so it's just, they just, you're just yourself. So I remember, I feel like I did the final week of recording was, Pretty much, the last few days, I was completely on my own, just mm -hmm. doing all that stuff. Um, but primarily, Catherine and I recorded together um, for like for like the scenes and dialogue and stuff like that. Um, and I believe that one of the callbacks, I think we read together in one of the callbacks. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, but I, but other than that, I mean, that's a pretty standard kind of you know formula for how things like that are cast. Okay. Yeah, so that's how it was done. Interesting, interesting. So I've never had to do anything like that. So it's all completely new to me hearing about it. 
if you interview Catherine and you speak to her and she says something different, then I'd probably believe her because it's 20 years <laughs> old and I don't remember, I don't, I don't remember every single detail, but I'm fairly certain that's what happened. Okay. I remember having to go to the studio to do a callback, to come in and like audition and like where they were like, we like you. Mm -hmm. It's between you. It, it, there was a few people they had narrowed it down to. They wanted to play around and hear, you know, the combinations of voices. And then they decided on me. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. Fab. Carlos is a bit of a fan favorite, as I'm sure you know, um, for his cocky attitude, yet his good heart. What sort of directions were you given when it came to voicing him? Were you given any sort of backstory? Not really. I mean, I mean, it, it, the only stuff I was given was directly relating to the game and the sequences that mm -hmm. whenever we were recording. So, like, you know, the producers, uh, the director, um, they would just – the information they would give us is to help us really understand the, the scenario that we're in, whatever mm -hmm. scene we're recording. Um, and then you just play around. I mean, which is, which is also pretty standard for the video game recording process or animation. Um, I mean – you know, they gave me backstory like you're a mercenary, you work for Umbrella, you know, so that you mm -hmm. understood who you were, that you were an elite sort of operative, that this kind of stuff was second nature to you, you know, so that your reactions in battle or your reactions in certain situations, you know, you're not a regular civilian, so you're not going to be like, what, and freak out, <laughs> but you're going to have more of a calm attitude because you've been there and seen things like that before, so you react. Yeah. So, you know, but I mean, again, that's pretty standard. Like even from the, even from the character description, I kind of knew that ahead. You know, you mm -hmm. know, so, so mostly it's just, uh, and, and, and again, very standard with video games and animation where you're, it's just situation communication. Like what's the situation you're in for this particular scene? And what is it, what's the, what is it you want to communicate? Mm -hmm. are we afraid, like, are, is there fear? Is there like, you know, do we have to calm down? Do we have to figure out what are we going to do next? You know, like situations like that, um, you know, and, and, and I mean, generally because I knew Carlos, the, you know, the, the general kind of feel for him was supposed to be, he's a pretty calm, cool, collected guy, you know, uses humor mm -hmm. and, uh, to diffuse things, um, you know, he was very confident, so... You know, that so, so then those kinds of attitudes are your foundational behaviors, mm -hmm. and that, that's what kind of colors your story. But then, like, even, even in regular acting for you know, camera or on in theater or live, live performance, I mean, you still you try stuff in mm -hmm. rehearsal, and like in 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 in, a, in voiceover, you try stuff, and then producers, directors would be like. I like that. Let's dial in a little of this. Let's try a little of this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you never know, you never know in post. Um, sometimes they'll be like, let's dial the volume back and then let's give one with more volume because they, you don't know what kind of noises are going to be in the background once they mix it all and stuff like that. So, right. Okay. So, so that's a pretty standard sort of thing that we, that the, the way it works too, because mm -hmm. as as you know, we, you have no idea what the designers are doing in the background, what the editors are going to do and how they're going to mix it. So you, yeah. You play around. You just give tons of different options. Okay, so, okay, that's yeah, so that's interesting. Fun. Yeah, because I mean, with with the character, he does come across as very cocky. Wait, I have to ask you something. I know, you want to ask me out. All the foxy ladies love my accent. It drives them crazy. <laughs> yeah, that was a kind of a foundational sort of behavior for. Him. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I think I think the idea is that everybody ultimately doesn't want to die, but a guy like him is sort of like, you know what? I'm I'm, I'm good at what I do. Yeah, I think he got it out of this alive. You know, is how yeah. I always had that was kind of the, the feeling that you always wanted to have with him. Yeah. You know? Oh, it makes him likable though. So uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, just, I'm... He's got, he's got a little bit of mischief in him. Which, yes. Which, <laughs> And I think, you know, first time I played the game way back in, was it 1999? I was 11. That's what made me like him so much because he was just a mischievous individual. You could yeah. just tell. He, he liked to have fun. <laughs> well, I was just about to say, everybody wants to have fun. Yeah. So, and when a character comes along who's having fun, even, especially in heightened situations like that, yeah. it's kind of a, it creates a, a dichotomy, sort of an opposite thing that whereas 
the audience watching or if you're if it's a video game where you're the game player you know your natural reaction is to think oh my god this is scary this is you know this is serious and to have someone who's kind of always playing the opposite of that or mm-hmm. styling humor is a, is a release it's like yeah it you go, oh that's unexpected that's you know yeah so which always, yeah. I mean, even to this day, when I go to conventions or come across fans, they, I mean, that's the number one thing. Everybody loves him because he's just <laughs> this, you know, he's just, he's, he never takes anything too seriously. He's yeah. Always, you know. Yeah, very laid back. That's yeah. why we love him. <laughs> By the time of RE3's release, the franchise was still only just three years old. Um, and already it was a powerhouse of survival horror. Were you aware of it before you took on the role of Carlos? Um, or did you go in completely fresh, not knowing anything at all? No, I, I mean, again, not a video game player. So not a, so that world is not really my thing. Mm-hmm. But, but as a voiceover performer, we were, I was aware of games and titles and shows that were really successful. And there's no doubt, like back in that day, I remember, you know, hearing how huge, the worldwide huge uh, Resident Evil was. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd heard of that, but I mean, stuff like that doesn't really register for me because it's not, it wasn't my, it's not my world playing video games. So it was just, for me, the, the fun thing was creating the character, being an actor, yeah. performing, having fun, you know, and then hoping that people will enjoy it. Uh, yeah. Which, which I think they did. Yeah, <laughs> and we still do. <laughs> responses and based on the fact that it's still around. And, um, yeah. I mean, that new series that's out now. That, um, what it, is it? Oh, is it it's on, on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, kind of divided the internet. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I mean, I, I won't watch it. It's not my cup of tea. But yeah. Uh, but I did, I did see a breakdown about it, and I thought, that's not the resident people <laughs> Familiar with or the <laughs> characters, or yeah, which is interesting because I thought I can see why what they're probably trying to do is mm-hmm. they're probably trying to open up a whole new world for yeah. Resident Evil. But I think what made Resident Evil immensely successful with movies, merchandise, franchising, the video games, all of it, uh, is the fact that people love the original characters. They love yeah. the original storylines. So, yeah. you know, when you try to reinvent a wheel, sometimes it's not, you know, listen, if it's done well, then I think people will love it. And I hope mm-hmm. people, do. I hope for the, the actor's sakes and the, the creative people that are behind it, I hope it is successful. But I was kind of scratching my head when I saw it too. Yeah. Not my cup of tea, it's just, but I thought, <laughs> uh, oh, I wonder what is this going to be about? Are they going to have some of the care? And then I saw, oh, it's like nothing it's completely different. You know? Yeah, hugely different. I mean, I, personally, I really enjoyed it, but I've got friends who absolutely hated it from the get-go. So it's like just completely split yeah. down the middle. It's madness, it really. Is. Yeah, as, soon as, as soon as I saw, I, I watched little. The tr- I watched the, the initial trailer for it, and I thought, well, it looked great. Mm-hmm. So I thought if, if people are willing to kind of say to themselves okay, this isn't the Resident Evil I know. I'm going to accept this as a new storyline, as a new thing. Yeah. And I, it looked like it was probably awesome. But it's hard to do that because fans are loyal. and Fans love what yes. they love. Yes, yeah. You know? Loyal was so, putting it mildly for some of us. <laughs> yeah. But I was, I was, back to the question, I was very aware of the, the, the uh, you know, immensity of Resident Evil at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had no idea that it was going to turn into this. Yeah. You know, with the, you know, yeah, the it's the- crazy how far it's come. Yeah. Um, I mean, moving on from that is it's quite a similar question. Um, Resident Evil has just turned 26 years old. Um, and over the years, the community has become huge. Um, how have you found the reception of the community? And what has been the most memorable incident so far for you? Um, I mean, there's, I've, I've always, uh, anywhere I go, conventions or, you know, bumping into fans or doing interviews like this, I, the reception has always been positive, awesome. Uh, I love the passion of the fans. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so uh, the reception, I, I've not 
ever encountered. I mean, I, I know you mentioned before when we were going back and forth and mm -hmm. tweeting, communicating to set this up that you were yeah. sort of like, people can be crazy. And you've heard that yeah. sometimes some, some fans can get a bit, you know, bullying and, and stuff like that. I've not run into any of that. Never okay. Once. Never once. Never once. I've even done like, you know, I've done um, panels where there's, you know, hundreds of people in a room asking questions. I've never once come across a negative. Oh, wow. Incident. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, so I was shocked when you said that. I, yeah. And saying that some of the cast members have run into stuff like that. I was like, not, not once, not once. Everybody's yeah. positive. I, I wonder too if it's, you know, Carlos was sort of a, you know, he was big in the RE3 and then they, you know, and then I know they had him in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know he's made other appearances, but RE3 was kind of his big yes. you know, story, like the, where he was a main. Um, and so I wonder if that was part of it. He was just kind of, he was, you know, I think when things progress and a character is, takes on multiple iterations and things like that, you get, like I was involved, uh, you know, I played um, Tuxedo Mask and Darian in the Sailor Moon mm -hmm. franchise. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there, I was the third guy to take over that role. And so sometimes I, I see that happen where people are like, I like this better. I like this person better. And I go, yeah, that's, that's cool. I mean, I get it. But for <laughs> me, uh, I've always been, I've been the guy that did the RE3, the original Carlos. And yeah. so I've never really felt that. I mean, I get questions of like, what did you think of what I think his name, Oded Fair is his name, who played, who oh, played yeah. Carlos yeah. in the movie. So I get questions like that and I go, I don't know, didn't see it. One, <laughs> and B, I think he's a good actor. I've seen him in other stuff. So I'm like, I'm sure he was awesome. I yeah. Mean, I would have loved to be in the role, but I was never asked. So. <laughs> oh, come on, Capcom. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so I've, I, I've never run into stuff like that, but the reception for me has always mm -hmm. been fabulous. It's oh, that's good. Awesome, just great people. You know, everybody's anybody that mentions it is typically a fan, so the reception is mm. positive. Yeah. Um, oh, fab. You know, that's and, really and then, nice to hear. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and a, a, me a memorable moment, a distinct moment. I think probably the the most memorable moment was the first convention I went to. Uh, now, gosh, I can't even remember what that was now. It's going back a long time. First time I went to a convention, and it was for something else. I believe it was for Sailor Moon, actually, at the time. Like, that was the main reason I was brought out there. They knew yeah. that I'd done or I'd done a bunch of other characters and video games and animation and stuff like that. So people, I knew people would, there might be people that were wanting to ask questions about those things, too. But the main focus of that convention was Sailor Moon. Um, but I had tons of people. Like there was a lot of people that lined up that wanted to, you know, talk and meet me and talk, and a lot of people talking about Carlos. And yeah. We go, oh, I, I guess in the future when I go to conventions, I, you know, should because I had like uh, comp cards of like tuxedo mask kit to sign, for mm -hmm. people, stuff like that. But I never had any Carlos merchandise or anything. Yeah. Like that to sign for people, because I didn't expect that. I really, I thought it was going to be very focused on the one thing, um, and to see the the quite a few people. It was a lot of reality like people who actually, they were like, they love Sailor Moon as well, but they were wanting to talk about Carlos a lot and Resident Evil. And I was like, oh, I, I better be, be ready to answer questions <laughs> in the future because there's clearly a, a passion and a fandom for, for that character. Yeah. Oh, you know, so fantastic. That was probably, the, that was probably the, my biggest memory cause, because yeah. I, remember, I remember that, you know, until that moment, it was just a game I had worked on. It was mm -hmm. over done. I'd moved on. I knew it was successful. I knew it was there were a lot of passionate fans, but I hadn't, you know, I hadn't encountered that firsthand, face to face. Yeah. And then just that overwhelming amount of people that were so passionate. And I was like, wow, that's cool. That's yeah. Awesome. Oh, fantastic. That yeah. wow. <laughs> well, it must have been just like, yeah. I can't even imagine something like that happening. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it, you know what? It was just fun. It was. Yeah. It was really. It was just fun. It's nice to know at the end of the day, when you work on something, you just, you, you hope you have to release it. You have to say it's in the universe's hands now, I hope, mm -hmm. you know, but ultimately you hope that it connects. You hope that yeah. people connect with the work you did and that it, for however they interpret it, they see a part of themselves or they see something, or maybe it's something that they aspire to or whatever, mm -hmm. but you hope 
they go, I believed it and I enjoyed yeah. it. I, well, I liked what you did. That's it. That's all I ever hoped for. And clearly, and clearly it has connected with Yes, you. 100%. So, <laughs> you feel like I did a good job. Throughout your career, you've done lots of projects from TV to video games, and you've had uh, voice roles in some massive titles, Sailor Moon being just one. For some reason, I had Assassin's Creed in that. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, were you in Assassin's Creed? Yeah, yeah, I played the oh. Marquis. Oh, yeah. yeah. <gasps> no. It is the truth. King George had already stopped our crossing once in Bordeaux threatening to seize my newly purchased ship, La Victoire, and arrest me. Yeah. Oh, I you, love that game. I played the Marquis de Lafayette, yes. Oh, yes. oh my days. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember, which, can't remember which number, which game. Oh, the, the one, oh, God, yeah. Uni one Unity? George Washington and... Like, yeah. Again, That's... Not, not a video game player, so when it comes to timelines... <laughs> People are like, in, in the fourth version or whatever. <laughs> there was four? I have no idea, you know. So I, was, I, I was Marquis de Lafayette. Ah, oh, Lafayette, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, must have been something to play such a big person in history. That was, that was fun because actually in that game, uh, I think, was it the first time? No, I don't think it was actually the first time. But that was uh, where we also did the mocap, the facial mocap. So, my, ah. so when you play that game, it's my eyes, it's my uh -huh. nose, it's my mouth. I mean, yeah. the, some of the, you know, I had long hair and a ponytail and stuff like that. So a lot, a lot of that stuff is digitally designed. Mm -hmm. They're my eyes and my nose and my uh -huh. mouth structure. So when he talks, yeah. like I've, I, I've never played the game, but I've seen footage of it and I've seen the, you know, the clips and things. And I always go, that is just odd especially <laughs> french and yeah different you know and it's and it's a time period piece uh -huh. it so looks like i go holy crap like i feel like that would be a french cousin of mine or something you know what I mean? <laughs> or brother or something yeah like no there's no frown italian but background in english but yeah so i mean i've done other stuff like that but I, I, that might have been the first time that i did that uh-huh i can't remember um so so that was really memorable. I, I yeah. Loved, I loved about the game. So like, that was one of the first times, if not the first time, where I was like, that's me. That's actually me. Like, it's not just my voice. It's, it's me. Like, yeah. I, how I strange. But how cool at the same time. Yeah, cool and strange. Yeah. Really <laughs> yeah. It's an odd thing. Anytime, I, anytime it happens, you go, that's weird. That's weird. <laughs> you know? It also makes you, you have that little bit of nervousness where you're like, if they can do that, like, what else can they do? <laughs> yeah, especially because that game is, I feel like, it's been, quite it's old now, isn't it? New York, like 10 years. So it was probably about 11 or 12 years ago. Right, yeah. Right, right, right down there, right just before we moved to New York. Because I remember uh -huh. when we moved to New York, I remember walking down uh, uh, Broadway in Times Square and all of a sudden looking up and there was a massive, like, building covered in a, Assassin's Creed post <laughs> and it was like the release date in the yeah. game and I and my wife and I were walking down the street and we looked up and we're like, whoa. Like, <laughs> I, guess, like, I guess it's a big deal. Yeah. Like, <laughs> about the game too. I, I loved being part of that game because I loved learn like, you know, when you're playing something where you go, Oh, a lot of this stuff actually happened. Yeah. Uh, now, not the, necessarily the specific things in the game. But the uh, specific battles actually mm -hmm. happened. Yeah. My, and that, that human being in real life was present at that battle, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that was kind of fascinating, where you're almost trying to give reverence to a historical figure that mattered, that changed the course of history for this country, for America, yeah. for the world, you know? And then, and then the beauty uh, and fun entertainment value of, like, Okay, and now that's, you know, it's now a game player thing. So that battle could change depending on the game. You get mm -hmm. some control of what happens, which is kind of fun too, you know. Yeah. Um, that, was, that was fascinating. But the historical stuff was really interesting. Was really yeah. Interesting. Is there anything that you learned from being Carlos that you were able to take to your other roles? Um, the, the Resident Evil was the first... Um, 
like heavy lifting intensive video game I'd ever done where mm -hmm. you know, it was every single day in the studio for eight hours for like almost a whole week, I believe we did. And then, yeah. then I did a bunch of days of just, like I said, damage and all that stuff of fighting sequences. And then, then they went away, they did some editing, then you come back and you go, okay, we, you know, we need this to be line to be a little louder or we want this to be, you know, let's let their tweet lines. So that was, you know, that was the first time I did a video game where, um, it took, it was a process. It took a while to record. So sustaining the character, maintaining all that stuff, um, you know, pacing yourself for an eight hour day of recording, mm -hmm. like in a row or two. I mean, I've done, you know, I've done tons of days where I've done eight hour days in studios, but to do that day after day after day and, you know, um, so I was, I mean, just, I don't, you know, I'm, I, I'm sure it's 23 years, 24 years ago or so. I'm sure there were specific things that I learned, tricks of the trade. I don't remember that so much. I just mm -hmm. remember the experience yep. was, it was, was sort of prepared me for future jobs yeah. that I did and stuff like that. Okay, fab. And also just the realization of how much goes into the creation of something like that. Yeah, you it know? must be a lot. Yeah, I'd never done something like that before, I, you know, other, unless it was an animated series, like an mm -hmm. ongoing like Sailor Moon or Brace Face or Ace Ventura or games. I mean, video, I mean, the animation shows mm -hmm. you know, or movies, that's different. Then, you you know, you know, you're going to have multiple days of work. But a video game, yeah. for me, was, you know, a day or two and then you're done. Mm -hmm. and, and because you mostly work solo, you pretty much they record you in a day or two almost always, you know, yeah. and then you're done. Um, uh, you know, but with this, because we were recording together a lot, it was a long process. It was like yeah. a couple of weeks worth of work. Oh, wow. So it's like working on a film. You know, which yeah. Is kind of cool. Okay. Yeah. I know like with the newer games, it's very much like that now as well, because they do all the mocap and the acting off each other and, uh, it, they can be there for weeks, if not longer yeah. doing it. It's mental. <laughs> mocap has definitely changed a lot of it the, the way it's done now just because you know that's a lot more detail like, mm -hmm. like you know for example assassin's creed you know um that was a f quite a few days of recording as well mm -hmm. um, even though i wasn't a main main character i was a, a major supporting character mm -hmm. that was quite a few more days too because you got to get into the you know you got the headpiece the all the yeah. cameras that are on there you know sometimes we'll Sometimes too, when you're dealing with that, it could be a good vocal pass, but they'd be like, ah, oh, your head was moving a lot, so it got a little shaky. And, mm -hmm. you know, so, so, um, so you end up having to do a lot more. It takes longer to do those yeah. kinds of recordings than when you're just strictly in front of a mic mm -hmm. and all you're doing is focusing on the audio. Recently, RE3 was remade um, and we were given a new version of Carlos. Um, have you seen, or obviously you has, wouldn't have played in any of it, like you've already said. Um, and if so, what are your thoughts on the changes made to the character, um, his story and his involvement in the story? I have no clue. No? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, Honestly, didn't see it, didn't even know that they had done that until you mentioned, you know, uh, so no, I have no Okay, idea. yeah, they remade it, when did it come out? Two years ago now, I think it was, um, and Carlos was played by a guy by the name of Jeff Shine, and they, he was very, very good, but he was oh. no you, <laughs> obviously, to all of us old hats. Um, <laughs> but he was amazing, and I'm sure the people, love, fans love him, I'm sure. Yeah, was. yeah, I mean, what was difficult for a lot of people to get their head around was the change to the story um they added things in and took stuff out and it's been another very divisive thing for the oh. for the community so there's often a lot of fighting about that on twitter as well <laughs> well i'm sure he was amazing. i'm sure he was awesome yeah i mean they had him in village as well the latest game um cool. as chris redfield so oh, okay. yeah awesome. really good in that as well talented talented young man when i have been talking to other voice actors um especially from the early games a lot of them have said that when they have been doing their lines the directors wanted them to overact and go in certain that sort of direction was that the same with you 
Um, I don't recall that. I don't. I don't recall the you know the the pushing to overact. I, I just. I mean. I just recall getting lots of direction and stuff, just uh-huh. because it's specific to scenarios. You yeah. know what I mean? I wonder if maybe some people felt like that simply because of the heightened sequences. Like the game is, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I, as I said, I've never played it, but I've seen clips and things like that. Yeah. Of, you know, um, of like a lot of the cutaways and stuff of the sequences and stuff, the, the almost filmic version stuff that was done. Yeah. Um, and, you know, everything is heightened. Like you're in the middle of trying to survive a <laughs> zombie you know, world and you know what I mean? Like all like all these different things that are happening. So you know, I think you're I I remember too the producers and the director always being like, oh, we, we need that energy to come up more. We need that, you know uh-huh. what I mean? Like, you know, yes, you're you know, yes, you're talking or you're making a joke, but we're going to, you know, give us a, push that energy a little bit more because mm-hmm. you're still, you, you've just ran out of a, like a, a, a fighting sequence. So you'd be a little bit out of breath or you'd be like, so I could see how that might be interpreted as, oh, I felt like I was overacting. Yeah. But uh, especially because when you're, when you're doing voiceover too, you know, it's, it, you're, you're not doing the, you're, it's a, certain actors work differently. I, mm-hmm to be very physical in when I'm doing stuff. Yeah. So if I'm if I'm running in a sequence, I'll be like I'll I'll actually start like try to you know run on the spot or whatever. Not mm-hmm. necessarily running, lifting my feet because that'll make noise, but you movement that that mimics a type of running that would then cause my breathing to naturally do what it would sound like. Right. So that, so that I'm not trying to fake that. Because then you, then I don't have to concentrate on doing that. I can concentrate on the scene that I'm playing and the intention, and allow the physical to in, to influence it. So, I, I mean, I just remember that about the game that it was, you know, it was, there was a lot going on. There's it's, it's a you know intense thing. So mm-hmm. you got to heighten the situation. The stakes are much higher in each yeah. sequence. Um, so I could see maybe that's why people were interpreting it almost as. I felt like I was overacting at times and mm-hmm. more scenes, but you know, but it was the situation. And, yeah. You know, okay. Crazy. So that's for me, a, I, that's I interesting. Never, yeah, I never felt that. Okay, fab. That's really interesting because I know, with, especially with the first game, um, I interviewed the main bad guy from that, um, Albert Wesker, and he said because it was back in 1995 they did those lines and they wanted it very b movie so he was like they really made us like go full out cheese on it so if you look up some of the um the the dialogue it's the 90s so things were still a little bit like you know i mean you know I, i mean when you compare some of the genres and things and ways that we did stuff uh-huh. was, there was excess yeah you know uh it's funny at the time i remember thinking this was so realistic and stuff because back then it was a, it was the first yeah. kind of it was a first of its kind situational game mm-hmm. um, i mean there were other others out there but this one was you know there weren't a lot that were anywhere near the detail and intensity of a game like yeah Resident Evil. um so but now i look back and compare to today's then you go <laughs> oh my god it's so she like it's, <laughs> uh, it seems it seems amateurish almost i'm not amateurish but like you know uh it's like watching it's like watching the flintstones compared to like you know realistic animation today <laughs> and you go <laughs> doesn't even it's not even you know it's 2d cartoon and now we're yeah. watching 3d and you know what i mean it's, it's crazy yeah so, so, oh dear yeah. <laughs> I, I don't i mean I'm, I'm trying to remember 24 years ago and thinking about being in that situation i never felt like it was okay it was over the top for what the, what the what it was though but mm-hmm. it was an over the top game like it's, yeah you know, you're being chased by some, there's nemesis there's yeah you know you're running around there's viruses, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's over the, that's an over the top situation. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I never felt like I was, had to, 
uh, had to had to be fake about it. I felt like I had to be overly cheesy. To me, it was just Carlos was a charismatic, cocky kind of guy. So yeah. you know, so if somebody interprets that as cheesy, I'd be like, I would probably agree with you. <laughs> I'm not playing cheese. I'm not trying to overact. I'm yeah. my intention is my intention is the heightened situation, the you know, given my behavioral attitudes that's what ends up coming off. Yeah. I'm playing, I'm playing the scenario. So, yeah. so I, never, I never felt that. Okay. You know, yeah. Yeah. I only felt that a little bit in the damage stuff when we were doing the fight sequence <laughs> stuff because, but that, I feel that every time I do video game stuff like that, because it is weird. It is weird to stand there and do like, okay, now you're, you know, imagine your throat is being slit and you're, give us, you know, oh, God. give us a short version, a medium version and a long version. You go, well, that feels weird because yeah. My a my throat is not slit. B <laughs> I don't imagine what would that be like. C uh, giving the different styles that they want, and then D going try not to destroy my voice because I've uh -huh. got another six hours to record. So oh my goodness, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but that I you know any any time you do those video games where you do that kind of stuff, the fighting sequences and the damage sequences. Um, that always feels weird and over the top because you know you're trying to put yourself in a scenario that is so, um, and you get no lead up to it. I think that's right. the, the thing too. If I'm if I'm recording a situation where I'm in the middle of a fight and there's dialogue or whatever, mm -hmm. then you then you know. But when you're recording damage or doing fight stuff, like give us a punch, short, medium, long, you're like <laughs> an actor. My instinct is to go, well, what's the situation? Like what's uh -huh. the punch? Like am I do, um, do I hate this person? Am I trying to kill them? Is it a punch where I'm just like, is it just a punch in the middle of 14 other punches? Yeah. So it's just, you know, is it just a regular punch? And you know what I mean? And sometimes, and none of that actually matters. Sometimes you're just, they're going to just create, they're just recording a crap ton of sounds. Yeah. And then they'll go, when they get to that moment in the game, they'll be like, oh, let's go to the punch sounds we have. And uh, this, let's put this one in. This, you know, this one sounds most appropriate. Uh -huh. You know, but as an actor, you're going, what's the, I don't know, what's the, what's the scenario, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're like, don't worry about the scenario. Just just punch and give a short, medium, long. We, we'll figure it out. And you go, Oh, okay. my goodness. Right. All right, then, cheers. Yeah. And it just sounds so, you feel so weird when you do it. Yeah. You know? God. And sometimes, too, which I always crack up, sometimes, like, uh, you know, you do, like, a, give us a kick sound. And then later, you'll be doing damage sequence, and they'll be like, Okay, now you're being kicked, and then you do a sound. You go, that oddly sounds similar to when I was doing the kicking. Like, <laughs> yeah, but it worked. It's not. You know, yeah. It's, and you go, okay. Like I go, couldn't you just use the kicking sound because it sounded sort of the same. Like <laughs> they're like, no, 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 it's different. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They'll be like, oh no, it was totally different. You go, ah, I don't think so. <laughs> but okay, if it works for you, fantastic. If the fans yeah. like. If people believe it, I'm happy. That's all I'm <laughs> oh, fab. We know that Carlos is a mercenary and he's a bit cocky. We've already gone gone through that. And he works for Umbrella, uh, but ends up helping Jill. What do you think it is about Carlos as a character that has made him so loved by the community? Uh, and would you classify him as a hero? Oh, absolutely. I mean, come on. Uh uh, I de to answer the last one, definitely. I think he's definitely heroic and a hero. I mean, he, you know, he's his uh, his overall guiding um, sort of ideal is to save, you know, and, mm -hmm. and so and uh, and anyone who enters a situation where you know something like that and doesn't run and is trying to do the best they can and trying to protect lives and stuff like that. I think that's heroic. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, so I think that, I think generally, yes. Um, I just think he's, uh, you know, when you, I said this earlier, the situation of the game, which was height, was really a very heightened game, mm -hmm. uh, um, very engaging, you know, had elements of horror in it. Not just, not just scary stuff, but like horror, you know, mm -hmm. so that was, fascinating and then to have somebody who is never quite reacting the way you think you know you yeah you, you expect 
in moments to be like, you know, people freaking out or terrified. And here's a guy joking it off or yeah. that's, that's fun. That that's in, that's, um, it's, it's like, it's, uh, it allows you a look into a world where you go, what if, and you wouldn't, and not, and it's not an instinctual thing. It's not a, it's not what you expect, the, the expected response. Mm-hmm. That's always fascinating to people. So I think, I, I think that's what mostly made him so enjoyable and yeah. loved is that you have, you have opposites, which creates conflict um, and allows people to go, oh, I wouldn't have expected that. I wouldn't. And the minute you have that, I, I always say, I, well, not, I didn't say it. Somebody else said it, but <laughs> I use the phrase, God is in the details. Yeah. I'm not a religious person, but the idea that greatness, beauty is in the detail of something. Yeah. So if you if you paint with a giant paintbrush, then you just get a wall of one color. Mm-hmm. But if you take a tiny paintbrush and you start painting flowers and birds and yeah. details, of roads and pebbles. Now, the person's eye goes, "Oh, I didn't even see that the first time." They uh-huh. can look a thousand times and be like, "Wow, I missed that. That's fascinating." So, so the more detail you add, the more layers of an onion that you're peeling. Mm-hmm more fascinating it's more interesting you know yeah. it's like i always say um when you have an actor who has a really interesting facial features sometimes they don't have to do anything on camera and audiences will be like oh my god i totally felt what that person was doing and you go <laughs> that actor didn't really do very much it's just their face is really interesting to look at you know, yeah I mean, they have a lot of wrinkles or they have their eyes are interesting or you know what i mean and and so it's fat when you see something that is detailed it becomes more fascinating. It becomes yeah. more interesting. So I think 100%. Carlos, had, Carlos had those layers. He had yes. they were, they were already built into him. Mm-hmm. They, they were created, and so when you put someone like that in a situation that's heightened, it's fun to watch. It's enjoyable. It's cathartic. It's you know, it's it's it makes you go. I would have never thought of that, and that makes you, you know, more engaged. Yeah. So I think yeah. Definitely. Funny. And again, going back to. He's mischievous and fun, and funny. He's got humor. Yeah, people. That's that's always a winner. You can't you can't lose the minute you have humor. You know, everybody yeah. loves to for you know. I exactly. Know, I mean, every every great action hero, pretty much. You know, starting in the late eighties and nineties. You know, you got Bruce Willis, Schwarzenegger. You know, all those guys, Stallone. There were always those comical lines are the ones everybody always remembers, right? Oh yeah. You know, like, you know, like I don't know if we can swear on this, but like, oh, of course you can. Hi, a motherfucker. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And that's what everybody remembers. Those are the moments. Like you remember a bunch, all the fighting sequences, but you remember that moment when Schwarzenegger goes, "I'll be back." You know? Yeah. What I mean? like, <laughs> like lines like that. Like those are the memorable moments because uh-huh. a heightened situation. When a character or an actor has that kind of response, mm-hmm. it defu- it's the opposite. It's it's detailed. And so yeah. Carlos had that in spades. And that's oh, God. Think, yes. Yeah. 100%. It was, it was super fun to play because of it. Yeah. Really oh, I bet. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even playing it now, because I, I speed run the game, um, even playing it now, I still get moments where I'm like cracking up because of Carlos, because you can't skip certain parts of the scenes. So there's one where you're running down this road and you just see Carlos running across in front of you going, no, <laughs> he's being chased by zombies every time. Eat this! Cracks me up. I love it. <laughs> I ask this to everyone that I have been interviewing. Um, So the only games that we've seen Carlos in is RE3 and the remake and the spin-off The Umbrella Chronicles. If Capcom were to ask, would you be happy to come back? Um, And if so, what sort of things would you like to see him do in order to finish his story? Um, I absolutely would do it again. It was, it was a blast. Um, yeah. I, think it would be, I think that would be really cool too, you know, because I was the first Carlos. Yeah. So, uh, so, to have, so to come back and be able to do that, I think that would be fun. I think for any of the original fans, the, the, the you know, the OGs who have been mm-hmm. around forever, I think that would be fun for the fans too. So that would be a blast. Um, 
would also be crazy, like 26, I mean, a quarter of a century later to come <laughs> back to something that you did. That, that would be fun. Um, as far as what I would want, I don't, you know, I don't play the games. I don't <laughs> watch the stuff, so I don't yeah. know. I don't know the storylines and stuff like that. I don't have any desires. I just want to, I, I, for me, I just want to have fun, uh, you know, playing the role. Uh, I would hope that if they were to do something like that, that they would stay true to the original. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, what would be the point to bring me back if you're going to yeah. say, okay, let's, let's completely change who this guy is. I think that would only, again, create divisiveness within the community because yeah. you'd have going, well, then why did you, why did he come back if you're going to make him a completely different guy? Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, if you're going to do that, then exactly, like have somebody else voice it, have somebody else create something new because it's a different storyline. Yeah. But uh, So that would be my only thing that I think I would personally want to see. Uh, again, though, if they asked me back and they were like, but well, we're going to make him completely different, I'd be like, okay, I'd probably do it. <laughs> That'd be fun. It would still be fun. It would still yeah. Be fun. You know, and... And I didn't create. I didn't create the game, so I. It's not up to me to make those decisions. You know, I mean, far be it. The powers of the the, the powers above. They they know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, their, it's their game, so you know. What I mean, I I just got to play in the world for a little bit. Yeah. Oh, it would be amazing to have everyone who was the OGs to come back. Yeah. It really I, would. I think that would be fun, actually. I think that would be cool because it is one of the first. I mean, it is not the like the the level that it reached the it, worldwide. It was massive, massive, yeah. and it was one of the first ones to be at that level. Like, oh yeah, you know, definitely. To not, to not only spawn a massive video game franchise, but then also to spawn a massive feature film franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, so many offshoots. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, so it's a it's a whole world unto itself. Yeah. Uh, and it's just getting bigger as well, you know, with TV, you've got board games now, you've got, it's yeah. it's madness. It really is. So I think there would be something, I think there could be something in there that would be a great uh, tribute, tip of the cap, to the original fans and the mm -hmm. original people from 25, 26 years ago that were like, we love this, this is what we loved. Um, and people still, I mean, that game is still played. People still love it. They, you know, mm -hmm. not even just, not even OG players, but like there's new players that play it. Yeah. And go, I've run into, I've been at conventions where young kids coming up going, I played the game. It was awesome. And I'm like, you, yeah. Back, <laughs> you know, there's much newer stuff out there. And they're like, you know, and they're just like, yeah, but I'm a Resident Evil fan. I went back and, you know, I played this game. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. You know, yeah. Like, and you go. Oh, okay, that's cool. So I, I think there would be something there. I think or, or there could be something there. Yeah. You know, there. Come on, Capcom. That, Let's do I it. Get asked that question about, yeah, I would love it. I get asked that question a lot. About I bet. The same and, and from other things that I've worked on. Mm -hmm. um, and it's never happened. It seems to be yeah. that the cr creators and producers, they always want to do something new. I think, yeah. too, I think, too, if you're a writer or you're a director or a producer – you don't necessarily want to yourself go, well, let's just remake something or let's, you know, even creative people, the, the, the people who aren't the actors, they go, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to put my time into something. Mm -hmm. I want to tell my own story. I want to tell something new. You know, I don't want to yeah. just go back and do what's already been done and then be, and then be, have people criticizing me saying, well, it wasn't as good as that or what, you know, I mean, you go, well, I don't want to, you know, so I think that's why a lot of times stuff, that kind of thing doesn't happen. Yeah. You know, uh, so, so, but I, but I still think it would be awesome. If it yes. Yeah. Even like if it was just a little fun thing, you know. Like even if it was just an a side, you know, like even if they created a little side game that it was part of, say, one of the newer games of like, uh, yeah. you know, or something like that, where it's like, you know, go back, like they step into a time machine and go back in time. <laughs> yes. Play as the as the originals. <laughs> that would be even that would. Hilarious. Oh, and that would be brutal. Yes. Yeah, those little Easter eggs in a game where you have to <laughs> unlock it and then you get yeah. to go back. You know I mean? like, oh, fab. That would be. That would blow their fans' minds, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> After this, I'm emailing Capcom and I'm yeah. making it happen. <laughs> Tell the community. Tell the community. You know? Oh, yes. Start writing the letters. I, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> no. 
If we're gonna die, then we should get to choose when it happens. Uh. Most, uh, many of us in the community grew up with the original games, uh, like we, we've mentioned, uh, playing them when we were far too young to actually be playing such things. Um, for instance, I was 10 when I played RE2 in 1998, and that was way too young. <laughs> These games um, have made us fall in love with horror, uh, influencing many of us to work in content creation, writing, filmmaking, or taking part in cosplay of our favorite characters. RE3 in particular has stuck with many of us simply because of how scary it was. Uh, Nemesis still frightens me. So how does it feel knowing that you were part of a video game franchise that has inspired so many people and still continues to attract new fans? Uh, it never fails to like uh, amaze me that at any time, I mean, literally just, you know, as I was saying, that new Netflix series mm -hmm. was just recently, I didn't even know it was out. And it was recently yeah. I was just scrolling through, you know, what's new on Netflix. And all of a sudden I see this title. I was like, this was a few weeks ago. And I, you know, I don't know how long, I don't know when they released it. I, I, but it was, a, it was just a few weeks ago that I saw it. It was late at night. And it's like, what, what, what should we watch next? And, yeah. came across and then watched the trailer. And I was like, wow, that, there's a new Resident Evil series out. I was like, that. <laughs> blew me away. I was like, this thing is, this thing just has this incredible life. Uh, so, you know, I mean, that's just, it, it's what you dream of that when, when you start out young, getting into the biz, mm -hmm. uh, of going, yeah, I want to be part of something that, that people love, you know, that yeah. every single thing you do, you hope that, you hope that anyone that sees it goes, that was great. I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that was, you know, and that's all, that's all you want. I mean, you can't, you can't control anything else. Right. So you, you do the work and then you release it and you hope that it connects with the audience. Yeah. And clearly Resident Evil connected on massive levels. And mm -hmm. yeah, the fact that it's, the fact that you can see the influence it's had on so many movies and franchises too. Yeah. Um, that's a fascinating thing. So it was it was amazing to be part of that. Um, you know, I just wish I would have been more a part, like you know, more, more involved mm -hmm. um, uh, as as the you know, I it would have been fun to do do that more. Um, that's my own fault though, uh, right? Because I chose not to come back. As oh, really? Okay. Yeah, at the, right after we recorded, I, this is always a weird subject. Um, but right after we did the first game, the Columbine shooting happened. Right. There. Yeah, yeah. And it was, I mean, literally right right around the time that we finished the game. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was a lot of controversy of, of like, our video games contributing to, like, horrific yeah. video, like, these extreme video games. And Resident Evil was brought up a lot. Yeah. Like, you know, at the time. And... I didn't necessarily believe it because as an actor, I go, listen, I, we acting and telling stories has been around for thousands of years. I mean, mm -hmm. literally traveling shows like, you know, minstrel players. Yeah. It, it, it is a, it is one way. It's a way that we human beings reflect ourselves and learn and grow. Mm -hmm. And we have, we have to tell the hard parts as well as the fun parts and the good parts. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that's not a true story. We're not really getting our full experience in life. Um, but I remember at the time sort of going, I don't know. It does, is there some sort of influence with younger people, mm -hmm. you know, and is it be a negative thing? And so at the time I was sort of like, I don't know if I want to do that. Like um, just the extreme stuff. Mm -hmm. And so when they, asked, when they asked me to come back and voice them in the next installment, I said, no, I turned it down. Because right. Of the Columbine shooting. Um, in retrospect, I regret the decision because, which was my instinct too. I was sort of like, I, I, mm -hmm. I don't think it does. I don't think that, you know, we can't be responsible for someone who's not well. You know what I mean? Yeah, precisely. If a person makes that choice, it's not the video game. It's not those things that made them make that choice. There's something else going on. Yeah. Um, uh, but I was I was young myself. I was newly out of university. Mm -hmm. It's one of my 
first came. I'd only been, you know, a couple years out of, you know, in the biz. Mm -hmm. and so I, and I was working a lot, I was doing a lot of stuff. So I also had that ability to kind of go, if I'm not feeling right about her and I'm not sure, then I, it's, this isn't the only job I have. I have other choices. So I'll just go do those things. Yeah. Um, so I wish I, I wish at the time I had, had a better perspective of it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, And at the time, yeah. I didn't know that. So I was sort of like, I don't know that I want to be a part of something that 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 could have a negative influence on people. Um, yeah. You know, which is fair enough, because that was absolutely horrific, wasn't it? So, you yeah. know, I don't blame you one little bit. And I don't well, think anyone would. <laughs> I mean, my, this is, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people out there. This will cause crazy flack, I'm sure, but I don't care. <laughs> um, my theory is if we get rid of the weapons that kill, then it doesn't matter how many video games you play. It doesn't matter how many movies you watch. It doesn't matter how angry you are. It doesn't matter how upset you are. You can't mass murder Hundreds of people in the split, on blink of an eye, mm -hmm. if you don't have access to the weapon that can do that. Yeah. I go, I, 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 like right now, the horror of watching what's unfolding with the Uvalde shooting. And, yeah. You know, oh. it's, every, it's every single day. It's every single day. Mm -hmm. And I go, I go, and then to watch journalists, politicians, p the average person twist yourself into a pretzel to try to figure out mental health, video, all these reasons, all these things, parental influence, blah, 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 blah. And I go, okay, though, all those things are valid, mm -hmm. but the weapon is the, like, the <laughs> weapon, without the weapon, the yeah. rest of it can't, the rest of it is solvable. Without the 100%. weapon, you can't mass murder 20 people in the blink of an eye without yeah. that weapon. Exactly. We don't have anything near like, near it happening over here at all, no, I, and it just I, goes to show. Um, it's it's and, the, 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 and you know that 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 famous saying of doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. Yeah. So I just go, we we wash, rinse, repeat every single day in this country, and I just. You know, and, I, and then I love hearing people that try to, uh, you know, attack actors or attack creative, like artists mm -hmm. making video games or making Resident Evil franchises. And I go, bullshit. It's a yeah. it's an entertainment. There are, there are millions of fans out there. Resident Evil has now been around for 26 years. There's millions of fans worldwide. They don't kill people. Exactly. But one person that do, who's crazy and you want to say it's Resident Evil? I'm gonna go with it's the weapon. It's the mm -hmm. gun. Like yeah, all that. Yeah. Then we, then we can make whatever we want. We can tell whatever stories we want. Yeah. Humans have told stories for thousands of years. Acting. Shakespeare wrote plays that still matter. We still mm. put them on. Operas that were written hundreds of years ago are still right now. The the Lincoln Center in New York. That's five blocks from where I live. You know they're performing some of the most famous operas this year as a mm -hmm. comeback. As well, the pandemic's over. They're, they're doing Tosca, Rigoletto. Oh, wow. You know, they're doing some of the most famous of all time operas. Uh, you know, uh, and you go, we've been telling stories for years. Mm. Mass murdering of people has, all, like, uh, and the ability to do it in the blink of an eye has only been around for a very short period of time when you yeah. think about it. Yeah. In the grand scheme of human existence. It's the weapon. It's actually one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Like Britain, Britain doesn't have that. Like, can't, it's not as prevalent in other countries. Because yeah. They don't have access. So, so sorry, sorry. No, no, that's honestly, it's fine. But no, I completely agree with you. And then it's when people who are very pro-gun and they turn around to me and say, "Well, what over there? You get people stabbing each other instead." And I'm like, "Yeah, but we don't go into schools and have." people stabbing up loads of kids you know it's oh yeah. you can't kill 20 people in literally five seconds with a knife no. it's not possible no it's, not possible. it's physically impossible so yeah and also the police in uvalde would not have wondered what should we do next mm. if they if they knew there was a knife in the classroom as opposed yeah. to high-powered ar-15 like you yeah. go assault rifle 
the reason they delay is because they go, we don't know what we're going into. We don't know what we're doing. I but still, if there was no AR, if that bad assault rifle wasn't present, there would have been a different outcome. Oh, God, 100%. yeah. 100%. So, Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Stay because I'm sure you're going to get inundated or whatever. I'm not <laughs> anti-gun either. I'm not, oh, no, not, that's all right. Honestly. The funny thing is, I'm not saying that I don't, that I think all guns should be banned. Like, when you ever hear those mm-hmm. arguments, like, I don't agree with that. I just go, there's places for, like, there's gun, there's shooting ranges. Yeah, yeah. A gun, you know what I mean? There's there's appropriate situations. Yeah. To just, for anybody to just have a, an assault rifle in their home for no yeah. reason. Yeah. I'm like, I don't understand. I just don't understand it. Yeah. You know? Well, they're military grade, aren't they? So why does exactly. a random person need a military? Yeah, hunting. I go, I don't, you don't kill a buffalo with an assault rifle. You know what I mean? No. I, and again, as an artist, this is the point I wanted to make. As an artist, it makes me sad too because um, we want, as a, you want the freedom to tell stories, to tell, you know what I mean, without having to worry about the idea that it could potentially influence somebody. Mm-hmm. But if the person doesn't have access to something that could, that that could do, that could create that kind of harm and, and, and pain and suffering, then as the artist, you have more freedom to go, okay, I don't have to worry about that. I can yeah. tell the story and allow people to, you know, but, but, but then there's, there becomes this responsibility as the artist too, which I think is always there anyways. We should mm-hmm. be responsible when we create things of like, what is, what is it I'm trying to say? What is it I hope the response will be? But, um, but still you have, you have less fear that it could be, it could be, you know, deviated or used mm. in a different way that could end up causing something awful. Have you kept in contact with any of your RE3 castmates? Obviously, we know about Evan. Um, in interviews with other VAs, particularly from the early games, it seems that this hasn't been the case because of how it was all done solo, like you've mentioned there. Um, whereas the newer titles, the the cast have maintained a, a close friendships and a camaraderie because, you know, they're bouncing off each other all the time. I think I get what you're saying. I, I, I mean, I moved away from Toronto, mm-hmm. uh, you know, tw- it's almost 21 years ago now or so, 22 years, 22 years ago, something like that. So I've been in L.A. I was in L.A. Now I'm in New York. Um, I, through social media, you know, friends and stuff that we we're you know i still talk to people here and there but mm-hmm. generally no I, I you know not really intimately you know friendships and stuff like that um mm-hmm. but i think for me i think a part of that too is just because i moved away i physically right. moved away so um you know i'm still in touch with a lot a lot of old friends from from toronto and i see them at conventions and things like that um but uh yeah, not a, not like a not deep friendships where you're getting together a couple times a year or things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Okay. But I, I also suspect. I mean, you're saying that you've not heard that a lot, so I guess that that's more prevalent. But for me, I always thought that it was because I moved away shortly. You know, yeah. A few years after completing that game, uh, yeah, like within within about four or five years after I moved to the states to to Los yeah. Angeles. I know Pablo from RE1 has said he hasn't spoken to any of the cast since oh. they've done the game. Um, but whereas the guys from Resident Evil 7, they're like best friends. They're always oh. going out, drinking together, having dinner. It's great to see. So uh, I think it's probably mainly to do with how, you know, like you mentioned, it, a lot of it was done solo right, in like the, the recording. Yeah. yeah. Um and you just didn't have chance really to hang out. Yeah, although although I've done other stuff where we've recorded separately. I've done mm-hmm. other projects, video games, things, and I'm friends with other people that you know that I never we never actually work physically work together, but yeah. we you know, stayed in touch just because of because uh, I already knew them or we were already friends prior. You know what I mean? So I just with the for me the Resident Evil game. Um, uh, there's a few people who worked on it that I still talk to on social media and mm-hmm. occasionally see at conventions, but those, I wasn't friends with them. Like we weren't close friends. We were friends. Yeah. With, we were business acquaintances, business friends. So I consider them friends, 
know, yeah. but not not people that I'm having dinner with regularly or hanging out. Yeah. But again, I moved away, so too those relationships become more just you know grow apart. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, okay, last question then. Um, right. And you probably get asked this, get asked this all the time. Um, is there a particular line of Carlos's that has remained with you as a favorite? <laughs> uh, I think it would probably be uh, what was it? What is it? Uh, how's it going again? All the foxy ladies love me. <laughs> it drives me crazy. <laughs> Yes. That's pretty good. That's I, every time I go to conventions, I always have to remember exactly well, how, well, how does how does what how does he say it again? All the fuck these love my accent. It drives them crazy. Yeah, that's the one I get all the time. I bet. I bet. Oh, I love it. That's that, the number one. Yeah, <laughs> that's made my day. <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant. Well, listen, Vince, thank you so oh, no. much. It's oh, been an absolute pleasure. It really has. 